So I, I want to just tell you about this Michael. Uh, what's Michael's name? Michael Phelps situation that we talked about yesterday when Michael said that uh, he could not, he was like tripping out, uh, paraphrase, tripping out, tripping out over the uh, Chinese virus, being home or not being able to function, and that he was tripping out. And, uh, He described his uh, mental illness as a lifelong battle that no one ever truly gets over. And and I ask you guys and ladies out there, what did you think about that? And really some good input. But uh, my experts was here. They were talking about it. What I've come to realize is that... um, there is a spiritual order. What's wrong with it? There is a spiritual order. I had to get dressed really fast, so I'm not always, my afro is not together or anything. My afro. But there is a spiritual order going on, a warfare between good and evil. Your mind, which is the mind of Satan, is evil. And good, which is the kingdom of heaven within, relies within the soul of your belly. And then this battle going on where evil one, it already has control of you because you're born, as the Bible calls it, in sin, meaning that you are born into a crazy family. And that crazy family tends to... uh, uh, cause you to fall away from God by turning you away from the father and uh, toward the mother and recreating you in the image of evil and that spirit that's in her. And so that battle is going on because kids are born innocent and they're not born with this battle in their head of evil. That's why God said, bring every thought into captivity. So kids are born innocent, and but when they are traumatized, or turned away from their uh, father, and 99.9% of the time, 99.9% of the time by their mothers, they're traumatized. And so that's when the battle starts between good and evil. And so what happened is when you're in your imagination, that's why God said bring every thought into imagination, I mean into captivity, live in the present. When you're out of the present, you're in the darkness. And in the darkness, you're going to feel the pain inside the sole of your belly. Your whole body sometimes ache because of the pain. You're going to feel the pain. But no one has ever told you that you should. I don't know about no one. But most people have not been told that you need to take that pain, relax in it, go toward that inner pain, and take it. Meaning, continue to do what's in front of you. Don't get high. Don't get drunk. Don't get angry. Don't um, don't get uh, angry. Don't escape into food or sex. Don't get on drugs. Don't lash out at other people. But quietly take the pain because the battle is really happening inside of you inside of your imagination and inside of your soul or your belly. And good and evil are fighting, but it feels like you. It really does and because you have es- escaped into your imagination, into thoughts, believing that they're your own thoughts, and you escape there as a young person trying to uh, survive. Because prior to escaping into the imagination, you lived and you were growing by logic as a kid, by the light of God. And if you had stayed close to your father, someone had not turned you away from him, then you would have grown up with that logic and you wouldn't be having that pain inside your body. But a lot of people don't know to take the pain. Instead, they go to the psychiatrist or the psychologist or some sort of expert or preacher, and they tell you, well, you got to get on medication. 
you are, you got a, your brains are messed up or something. HTDSD or STD, they tell you, they name it something that is not. They don't tell you, you got to overcome the fallen state. You got to overcome anger. And the only way you're going to overcome it, you got to face the pain. And don't blame anyone for it. Yes, your parents caused this to happen by not being perfect. But no one else is to blame. No one. And in that fallen state, you're reaching out for all kinds of things to get rid of that pain. Have you noticed whenever you hear the joint, <sighs> you feel better, like the problem is gone. And as soon as the high is gone, now reality kicks in again. But because you didn't go through the pain, you can't deal with reality. So now you got to get high again, or you got to hate somebody, or you got to blame someone or gossip or whatever. You got to find something to try to make yourself feel better. But you got to take the pain, and that's what Michael uh, has not been told that he should do. And with this Chinese virus, people shut down in their homes or whatever, and reality is setting in, and they don't know to take the pain. They don't know to take it. And I believe I heard stuff about Michael, mother was uh, uh, mean to him, or something happened with, between he and his mother. He also was smoking pot at one time. And all those things come as a result of you being separated from the father. And in the darkness of your imagination, you are reaching outside into the world for, to feel better. To, uh, to be free of the pain, but it's a temporary freedom. Money can't solve it. Friends can't solve it. You got to take the pain and, 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 and just be quiet and let God's will, God take care of it because you have everything inside of you to help you overcome that pain. And once you learn to take the pain without complaining about the pain, don't name it and claim it, just realize there's this battle going on inside. Once you learn to do that without blaming others or complaining or naming it and claiming it, wisdom will come. It'll blow your mind. And so as you're overcoming and you end up in more pain down the road somewhere, you know now to take it and don't complain. It doesn't mean the end of the world. It means life is being added unto you. Your ego is dying and you're coming alive and you'll be wiser but you got to bring every thought into captivity and you got to take the pain. But while bringing thoughts into captivity, if you drift off into a thought, you need to relax. In the pain, all the pain, and it hurts. I remember, I've told this before when I, I, I was doing radio in Oregon, and there were days when I could barely move. I would get off work, the show, and go home and just fall out on the couch. And I would just say, you know what, God? Whatever thy will is, let it be done. Because apparently you are letting this happen. I can't do anything about it because it was spiritual. And then after a while, it's God and, and wisdom flow from you like fresh water in a, in a stream. It's so amazing. But you got to take the pain. And Michael is wrong in when he said that it will always be that way, something like that. It will not always be that way. Because eventually you will overcome the imagination, the darkness of your mind, and you will be guided by the light, the voiceless voice, uh, wisdom, love. You will be guided by that. Uh, Philip says that he has to go to the gym uh, first thing in the morning. And if he doesn't, then his whole day is screwed up. And now that uh, he tripped out and get mad, if he doesn't go and work out in the morning, he call his morning workout his escape. But you can't use anything to escape. It's good to work out. I like working out. Uh, I like whatever, but I have learned not to use it as an escape. You got to go to that pain in your body. And I'm not talking about physical sick pain. I'm talking about spiritual pain, ego dying pain. You got to take it. 
But your psychologist is not telling you that. Your counselor, your preacher is not telling you to take it. You're not dying, but the, not you is dying. But it feels like you because you have identified with it. And taking pills ain't going to help it. What it does is it put you in a coma light where you don't deal with the issues of life. And if you ever miss a day from taking the pill, now reality, real reality sets in, and you're not able to handle it. And these doctors are telling you that it's your brain, your frontal brain ain't working, ain't working with the back brains or whatever they tell you. It's not that. And I know people have brain injuries. And so I'm not saying that if you got a brain injury, a physical injury, injury then you, you need to go and let the doctor sew it up. But that other, th and it's not a chemical imbalance. They're just making up this stuff. They don't know what they're talking about. Your brain is a physical thing that the, function, the um, job of the brain is to make the physical body work. Make your arms move, your eyes, and everything work. It's something else inside of you that's made a home in you due to the anger that influences you to do wrong, to think wrong, to believe lies. That's the thing you want to overcome. And unless you face that, you're not going to get better. Medication will not do it. And it's unfortunate that they are putting you on medication when you're a, a child because the mama don't know how to handle your energy. The father's not around. The teachers can't handle it because they're screwed up as well. And so they put you on medication, doming you down. And now you're living in your head on medication, thinking that you're talking to God. You are talking to God, but to God from below, not above, and not within you, in your soul or your belly. Your God, Satan, is in your mind. But you can't overcome, but you got to face the pain. You got to take the pain. And it's going to feel like you're going to die. It's going to feel like you're about to trip out, like you can't handle it, but you can. The spiritual pain. I'm just saying. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show for us. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it.